Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And we've been doing some Montreal Canadiens trade talk. We just did Petrie. And now we're going to do Brendan Gallagher. And you ask, well, did you just pull in this stuff out of your butt? No, actually. Jim Parsons from the Hockey Writers, he wrote a article that for from a beat writer, a really good insider that uh, mentions a few reasons why they may go this direction. And also just using logic, uh, Gordon uh, was hired by the Montreal Canadiens. Now, if you don't know much about Gordon, he was a the manager of the New York Rangers and was hired when they did their rebuild, uh, that which they're still sort of in, but coming out of right now. They got a pretty fantastic team there. Why? Because Gordon <laughs> built the team. Uh, he got released from the Rangers for reasons unrelated to the performance of his rebuild. Uh, some definite, some issues, philosophical issues among things that weren't really hockey related, it appears. And uh, Montreal didn't seem to mind that too much and brought him in. So you can make a pretty good assumption. Doesn't necessarily mean it's true, but you can make a pretty good assumption that a rebuild is on the horizon if you hire a general manager who's known for his rebuilds. So that's why we're looking at it that way. Also, we're going to look at some of the reasons why they may, and, you know, guys like Gallagher might be available, and who five teams that Gallagher could go to. And some trades, some people that could be picked up by the Montreal Canadiens in a trade such as that. Now, as a Montreal fan, I, I'm not a Montreal fan, but I, I'm not, not a Montreal fan. I am a Canadiens fan in the sense that they are a legendary organization, but I'm a huge Gallagher fan. And I know that if I was a Montreal Canadiens fan, it would rip me up inside to think Gallagher could be moving on. But there is some pretty good reason why it might be the right time for that to happen. And we're going to look at that. So I apologize ahead of time, Montreal Canadiens fans. Uh, you can come talk about this and all other topics to do with the NHL, all 32 teams we talk about here at the NHL Pearl of Wisdom Show from 1.30 to 3.30 Mountain Time, 3.30 to 5.30 Eastern weekdays. And we talk about everything and it's totally interactive. So you can come in and say whatever you want or you can just listen to what everybody has to say there in the show too. Frolic is amazing. This is a Perlo dance. This is something you'll learn on the show. Very important part of your life, I, I'll tell you that right now. This is all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Uh, if you like all four major sports and discussing and learning about all the things to do with those four major sports, you'll like Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Uh, okay, let's go to the article in question. The article here, again, by Jim Parsons from the Hockey Writers, it uh, talked about a lot of things, but it ta uh, talked about the Canadians who could be traded. Uh, Jonathan Bernier of TVA Sports was the insider that uh, brought up this possibility uh, by speaking to people in the organization, getting liens, all of those sort of things like that. Those players are Carey Price, which I'm going to do a video of after this, Jeff Petrie, which I just did a video of, Brendan Gallagher, Nick Suzuki, which I blows my mind. I, I probably will do a video on that. But we're doing Brendan Gallagher right now. And uh, it goes on to talk about how... Uh, the new GM won't be as close to Brendan Gallagher as Mark Bergevin was and may recognize the player's best years are behind him, uh, which is true. He's 29 years old. He plays a tough game. If they're truly doing a rebuild, it may be best to get as much value from him now rather than holding on to him till later. You can make a case for both sides of uh, there's something to be said for having a warrior like Gallagher in your dressing room as you do a rebuild. And the other part of it is 
Will Gallagher, like it talks here about Petrie, who actually said, Petrie actually said, when you're getting further on your career like I am, time becomes an issue. And maybe with Gallagher, there is that case. I doubt it. He seems to bleed blue and rouge, but uh, you never know, I suppose. The idea is, though, that if you're going to do a rebuild, do it upright. Maybe get a new leader, build up new leaders in the room, and uh, give young players the opportunity to put their stamp on this organization. It's a good possibility. It is a possibility. And I like the idea that they talked about how Gordon doesn't have the emotional connection to Gallagher as, like, say, Bergevin would have. However, the owners do. So that could have something to do with it. But we're going to look at it. Let's start first with uh, probably the most, it's always the most important thing when we're talking about uh, trades is what does that salary look like, right? Brendan Gallagher just signed a a fairly lucrative long-term contract. He signed all the way through 26-27. Right now, he is, like I said, 29 years old. So 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. He'd be 34 years old by the end of that this contract. And, uh, you know, I think that a lot of teams out there would find this to be a fairly favorable contract for what Gallagher does put up. Now, he is having a sour year this year, but everybody is. Everybody in the, uh, in Montreal is having a sour year that year. And I don't think that's going to really take much of effect at all on any team that might be interested in him. He's been a beast uh, throughout his career as a goal scorer, puts up, always puts up, you know, generally puts up about 40 to 60 points, somewhere in that area. And it's just his plain competitiveness. He is a awesome defensive player, um, competes every night, brings the energy up of a team in ways that um, most players aren't able to do. Pretty fantastic. So let's start, let's look at some of the teams that might be part of this to get Gallagher. And tell me in the comment section who you may have put in there to do this uh, trade for Gallagher. Starting off with the New York Islanders. Um, I, this just seems like a New York Islanders guy. Guys, you know, especially for Lamorello. Look, he went and got a guy similar to that in Gabriel Paggio. Paid him $5 million long term. Um, Paggio is that type of player. Kyle Palmieri is supposed to be. He's not putting up the points that he is, but he, he would normally do. Anders Lee, like these are gritty, grindy, not super high scoring, but super competitive, made for the playoffs type players. It's what Lamorello loves. This Gallagher is a guy that Lamorello would absolutely love. So now you're going to have cap issues. You're going to have to look at return. Um, maybe have to take Kyle Palmieri back in the deal just to have the dollars add up on both sides. He's making $5 million. And then um, there's a possibility of Anthony Beauvillier, of course. Anthony Beauvillier is a French-Canadian. I'm pretty sure this would be the player that Montreal would be looking to grab as my, um, looking to have part of the deal. They love Montreal. Can, our French Canadian players are, and for good reason. It's a French Canadian place. So uh, everybody loves the hometown guy. Uh, Anthony Beauvillier, seven points in 21 games this year. Not too great, but he has put up much better numbers than that uh, as of late uh, recently. Uh, his trajectory was going up until this year. 39 points in 68 in 2020 and 28 and 47 last year, and then just hit the pooper this year for some reason. But I think you could get Beauvillier plus for Gallagher. You could get Beauvillier, um, maybe maybe Scott Mayfield. I know Montreal loves their big defensemen, so that's a possibility. That would even up the money. And I do believe they even have a first-round pick next year here so yes first round pick something like that went might work i know a wallstrom would be great but i don't think they'd be willing to give him up uh maybe aho it depends on where the competition comes here there it could be a big 
return that you would get back for Gallagher, especially at the trade deadline, as teams see cups when they see guys like Gallagher. So they have a tendency to maybe pay a little higher for a guy like that. So you can see a lot of return, uh, first and a second, uh, big Big return. Like I said, Aho is a pretty is a, is a defenseman that's ready to go, offensive defenseman that should be ready to be in a lineup right away here. Um, and then there's Salo, who they, they started playing this year. From what I watched of him, uh, that's him right here. Uh, oh, sorry, Aho. Robin Salo. Uh, he's scratched, but he's a big you – know, he, he's only six feet. Man, he plays bigger than that. Anyways, I really like him. So there's a couple prospects there that you could get back. Beauvillier, um, possibly Palmieri, maybe Mayfield. Not a bad return for Gallagher, but it just hurts to say Gallagher's gone. All right, tell me Islanders fans. I think Islanders fans would really like this, uh, except for the ones that really don't like the idea that we're just getting older and older and older. But... You're going to do it. Do it right. And a guy like Gallagher would be doing it right, I would say. Uh, New York Rangers would be next. And, yes, the New York Rangers. Aren't they rebuilding Perlo? Well, it doesn't look so. It doesn't look so. It doesn't look like it this year. They're in a playoff spot. I think they're going to stay in a playoff spot. I predicted them to be in a playoff spot. They brought in a whole bunch of they made some changes, so they had guys that could play more roles, like Barkley Goudreau, um, and uh, who am I forgetting? Another guy that's injured, Ryan Reeves, Patrick Nemeth. Like, just they had a lot of guys that were very uh, offensive minded, very skilled, but not much grit. So, do they want more than that? There has been rumors that they're looking for a top six. Apparently, that's always the case with the New York Rangers, actually. It's a constant rumor that they're looking for a top six to six forward. Who would they be willing to give up in a deal such as this? Um, I think Philip Heidel could be a possibility, 22-year-old center. Uh, they could move Barkley Goudreau up there. They have Morgan Barron. They've been waiting for him for a long time. Start making him, letting him have the ability to be a fourth-line center in their organization, and uh, I don't know. I think Heidel's grown a bit stagnant in for the Rangers. I think it might be a good idea for him to move on to another organization because he looks like he has way more offense than what he has shown so far in New York. Every time I watch him, I'm like, how come this guy's not putting up numbers? He, he, he's got great he, – he has pretty good uh, – he's a good skater. He had 22 points in 42 games in 2021. They looked like he was going on a positive trajectory, and here he has six points in 22 games. It, it looks like he's lost his confidence, but he's a big boy, and he doesn't play overly small. He he, he uses his size not too bad. Um, I think he'd have. I think he'd be in a better spot somewhere else. I don't know why it's not all coming together for him, but that would be a guy that I would give a possibility to. Ryan Strom has been talked about uh, having difficult time, uh, difficulty with his contract coming up. Uh, Montreal could certainly use a center like him. He, he puts up 50, 60 point, points a season. Of course, you got now uh, the Rangers would be looking at giving up their first round pick here. And they have, which they have, and they have some fantastic young defensemen coming up. Really good young defensemen coming up. If you could scoop Braden Schneider, woo, that would be lovely. Um, I have a feeling they're not going to allow that to happen, though. Matthew Robertson looks really good as well. And Zachary Jones has had some time up in the bigs. He's looked good. Any one of those three, my preferred one would be Braden Schneider, who they, uh, in 2019, they moved up in the draft to grab. Um, and he's... Followed that up by ripping it up in junior. He's in the AHL right now. What's he pulling up? Nice big defenseman. Great maneuverability. Seven points in 18 games. Never gonna never was meant to like look at that as being a huge offensive producer, but he's actually producing more offense than 
they looked like he was going to produce right away. So his offensive upside is really good. That would be the guy I'd be looking for. Strom, Schneider in a first for Gallagher would be fantastic. I think Rangers fans would think that was too steep. Maybe not. Tell me what you think, Rangers fans and Montreal fans, if you like that idea at all. Uh, Detroit Red Wings is the only team I have that isn't really a contender at the moment, but they're such... They're going at such an upward trajectory that they might be in here. Now, something I didn't mention, Gallagher does have a six-team six team no trade list. And one of those teams could be Detroit. I imagine he'd be looking to go on a contender, but maybe not. It's close to Montreal. It's not too far from Montreal where he's put his roots up. And this team is going to be really good really quick. So the good thing for Montreal for a trade if they decided if he decided to go to Detroit is they would be able to get a pick from a, a, a lot of prospects here and Detroit would not have to give money back there would have to be they wouldn't have to take any contracts back if they really wanted to do a rebuild Detroit has the cap space to be able to take on a guy like Gallagher now the question would be why would Detroit who's pretty much in a rebuild still they're not out of it yet want a guy like Gallagher. Well, first of all, they're looking much better this year. They have a lot of young players that are going to be ready to jump up. If they had Jacob Verana this year, they could be stretching for a playoff position already. And what better guy to come in and show the Lucas Raymonds, Philippe, Philippe Zadina's, assuming that he's still there because I think he was going to be part of this trade, and so on, how to compete. Gallagher is like a just beast when it comes to professionalism, comp competing, grinding, work ethic, all of that stuff like that. And how, he's only 29 years old. So he would be able to still be there with this team who is probably going to be darn close to ready in two years to maybe be on a dynasty level team. So Gallagher may see that, talk to his agent and go, you know what? This isn't a bad idea. So who would they give up in return? Well, Philippe Sedina has not really progressed as much as they would want. Montreal would have more time to give him, uh, more ice time even really to give him to become the better player than he is. He was a sixth overall in 2018. Uh, his tools are fantastic. Amazing shot. Great one-timer off the half boards. Super uh, great speed. He just hasn't put it all together yet. And for a guy like Gallagher, I could see them maybe offering up a guy like him to uh, to acquire that. Joseph Bellino um, is a possibility. He's another. He's he's kind of like a he's kind of a heart and soul guy too. Uh, he he probably won't have a lot of offense, but he's a good. He looks like a good leadership. Uh, player who normally is a center and they got playing left wing. I don't know if you'd get both of those, but one of those um, draft picks they have. And that's the other thing. They probably either will be in the playoffs or miss the playoffs this year. So if you look at their first round draft pick this year, it could be somewhere around 12 to 15 or maybe even better. That's a solid pick. Uh, in what has not really been thought of as a deep draft, but there's a lot of guys in there. Or you can even go further and try to get that 2023 pick because that would be that's going to be a much sought-after pick next year. I don't know if Detroit would go that far, but if they would, I would consider Zadina and that pick just on that alone because that pick is extreme value. If not... Uh, you're probably not going to get any of their defensemen that are in the lineup, but there's a guy I really like in Detroit as far as prospects. I love Edmondson, but I'm pretty sure he'll be off the table. They just absolutely love, love, love him. Almost like a Slavin-type defenseman that they picked up sixth in 2021. I don't think you're getting him, but I do like William Bollander. Um, big, solid, rangy uh, type player a lot like the uh, player that Detroit already has in Cider and uh, maybe you might be able to wrestle the 32 overall pick in 2020 from them and I really like him a lot 
So those would be some of the guys that maybe Montreal would be able to pick from Detroit for Gallagher. Next, we're going to go to his hometown. Gallagher is from, I didn't look at this again. Gallagher is from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. I'm sure as much as it's not, top six is not really what Edmonton needs, but I don't think they can help themselves, but at least speculate and try to bring a guy that's from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada to there that plays like Gallagher. Imagine him playing with McDavid. Oh my gosh, it just gives you shivers to think what that guy can do with a guy like McDavid and what he can bring to a team that is learning how to win. I mean, Gallagher knows how to freaking win, man. Uh, again, this was a six-team no-trade list. I doubt very much Edmonton would be on the no-trade list. You never know. Some guys don't like playing for their hometowns, but I don't think Gallagher would be somebody like that. Guys, you could get back. You, I think you could get back Jesse Puglia Harvey. I, I, I bet you. Jesse Puglia Harvey, because he's a right winger, Gallagher. You're playing, going to be playing him on that top line anyways. You could get back Kaylor Yamamoto's not really hitting it out of the park there in Edmonton, uh, but he's got a ton of skill and plays hard, plays the right way. Um, so I, the, one of their top six would probably have to go here. I don't think that they would, wouldn't would have to go, but to make room financially and all of those sort of things like that. Um, then... Again, they're gonna the, the difficult thing with Edmonton is you gotta make the money work somehow. And I think that might be the most difficult aspect of this trade. Jesse Pooley Harvey's only making a million. They're almost they, they gotta somehow make it up to six million. Maybe Zach Cassie. No, that didn't work out in Montreal, did it? That won't work. <laughs> Uh, that would be the diff biggest difficulty here. But if you could make the cap work somehow. Maybe Tyson Berry. Tyson Berry, you'll fill in that cap. And then if you're going to give you a fill, if they got to give you a, a contract back, they're going to have to give you more uh, as far as prospects and stuff is concerned. So I got one for you. And I know that Edmonton Oilers fans are going to hate on this. Dylan Holloway. Dylan Holloway, you're in a win now mode here in Edmonton. Gallagher's certainly going to bring you there. It's hard to swallow because I don't want to get rid of Dylan Holloway. But I think if you threw Dylan Holloway in there, Montreal would might very well bite. That kid is big, solid, can skate. Questionable offensive upside, though. And uh, But having a big center like that, I think, would be huge for Montreal. It's, he'd be a good building block to build off of. And then the first-round pick to boot. Would they throw all of that in there? I don't know. But I think, like you said, if you look at some of the packages we're talking about here, it's going to get very competitive for a guy like Gallagher. And they may have to throw a lot of what I just said in there. Tell me what you think, Edmonton Oilers fans. Some, all of what I said. Um, I Like I said, if you're giving up Tyson Berry, his value right now is not all that huge out there on the market. And I don't think he would be all that huge to Montreal. But so they'd be kind of doing you a favor to make it so you could get Gallagher. You might have to give up a little more in prospects in order to give up uh, for, for Barry to be part of that deal. Next, Colorado Avalanche. This is where I think he's most likely go. Tell you the honest truth. If he's out there, Joe Sackick, I'm sure, would be dying for a guy like that. Uh, they have Nazim Kadri, who has toned it down a bit as far as making you know mistakes. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> the penalty, undisciplined penalties, and so on and so forth. So far this year, but and they've got a lot of skill. They got a great uh, leader in Landeskog. Uh, now, um, and this Logan O'Connor kid has been doing good, which leads me to what the return would be here. I think they would be killing for Gallagher. If they, they've got some cap space. They got about $2.3 million in cap space, I believe. Uh, just make sure here that that's the case. 
That Sackick always keeps gives himself some cap space. Oh, no, he's only got 356. Oh, good thing I looked. So they got a little bit of cap space. They're really going to have to give up uh, some some uh, contract to keep this, uh, to, to make this work. So I'm looking at Logan O'Connor. Uh, that's what I'd be looking at if I was Montreal. Maybe Burakovsky. They're, they're finding a hard time having finding space for Burakovsky. But a big shooter in Montreal, he's only 26 years old. Logan O'Connor, Burakovsky in their first next year. I think that gets it done. Logan O'Connor is like a poor man's uh, Gallagher. He is young. He plays hard. He's figuring it out at 25 years old. I think you really love him there in Montreal. Um, and Andre Burakovsky is, uh, you know, he's put up good points, 25 to 30 goal scorer. He's got a killer shot. Play wicked with Suzuki, I think. Uh, not great defensively, but you're looking for offense and young players to rebuild quickly in Montreal. I think that would be not a bad deal. He had 20 goals in 58 games, 19 goals in 53. puts puts together a full season. You you got you could have a 30 goal scorer there, not too shabby. Plus Logan O'Connor and a first round pick. Maybe Martin Cout. I love that guy. Lots of speed. More of a, a bottom six guy. Throw him in there. I think Colorado would be the team that would be most looking for a guy like Gallagher, looking for going on a cup run, wanting com- guys that compete, want playoff type guys. I think they would be the ones to really cough up a lot of prospects, which they have a lot. They have a lot of Justin Barron on defense. Uh, Rampo Sampo had some time in the NHL already. Mikhail Maltsev, which they got from New Jersey. There's a lot of good, solid young players in Colorado. And I think they'd be willing to to pony up. So what do you think, Montreal Canadiens fans? Do you think that uh, that is a decent return for Gallagher? Do you think Gallagher should even, should I even be talking like this? It's just a sacrilege. That's my full 42. Have a great day, everybody. Okay, bye.